there is someone on this account who is called plumber and hardware i think uh, that is his profession and that is the business he carries out so he did leave a comment in the comment section and uh, let me just read you that comment briefly so he said david kindly analyze did Nyoro rise up as mount kenya kingpin so first of all, Didi Nyoro has not risen to become a kingpin, as at now the de facto leader of the Mount Kenya region just so happens to be DP Regadi Gashagwa. We can't deny the fact that Didi Nyoro is actually very much loved in the Mount Kenya region. The amazing work he has done in Kiharu has made sure that people have noticed him, they have seen his potential. But I would like to remind you that also Peter Kenneth enjoyed that same kind of uh, popularity and reputation at one point when he was MP. But now he is nowhere in the political scene. So in this video I want us to look at the various blunders that Didi Nyoro has been making that might deny him in future if he doesn't change them. They might deny him a chance to become the leader of the Mount Kenya nation and also a future presidential hopeful. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, Hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, the first mistake that Didi Nyoro is making is the very same mistake that Dennis Itumbi has been making all along. When you look at Dennis Itumbi, his contributions to uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa outfit is actually greater than some of the people who are sitting today as cabinet secretaries. How he micromanaged the HNIB, the way they did data tabulation, the way they put their math across, the way they shared and distributed their data across various platforms. That was top notch. Also, when you look at the communication strategy that Dennis Itumbi had laid bare for the Kenya Kwanzaa government, even the very slogan that freedom is coming, it was very catchy. Dennis Itumbi was one of the people behind that slogan. He is one of the best communication strategists in this country today. In fact, if anyone wanted to put across a message, be it a politician, be it a brand, Dennis Itumbi is one of the top people you need to be looking for. Now, despite all those contributions, even the other contribution I was just about to forget, this guy was actually kidnapped by the same SSU unit that sends people to Rivayala. He took a hit for the government, so his contribution is actually very, very big. And despite all those contributions, and him being an excellent communication strategist, Cabinet Secretary Elio Dowalo came from nowhere and became the CS of communication. So what was the blunder that Dennis Itumbi was making? He was doing a very phenomenal job, but he was not lobbying for any big seat. Probably one or two times when he's within a earshot of the president or the DP, he would be telling them, Namkubo ukifika pale usinisahau, I would like to be a CS of communication one day. You know, you say it as a joke, but based on your contribution, you are backing up what was looking like a joke with action. And Dennis Itumbi really worked for the Kenya Kwanzaa government. In his absence, I don't even know if they would get there. I know it was a collective contribution from everybody, but his was one of the biggest ones. But in all fairness, people have different ambitions. There are people who want to become cabinet secretaries. Others want to become nominated senators, nominated MPs or MCAs. But there are some people in life who will help you without expecting anything in return. Perhaps Dennis Itumbi doesn't want anything with too much pressure, so he pushed the government. And then he settled on something that's a bit low-key. He can uh, micromanage his affairs without having to be in the newspapers and in other areas. Perhaps that's his plan, I don't know. But had he lobbied, he would be the CS of communication today. Now, how is that relating to Didi Nyoro? Didi Nyoro is actually one of the MPs, second to Rigadi Gashagwa, who is a former MP of uh, Madira, who really stood with the president. In fact, DP Rigadi Gashagwa was only confined in Mlima Kenya. He was in the mountain campaigning day in, day out, as President William Ruto traversed the other parts of the country. And everywhere the president went, there were four people with him. He himself, let me count him out, that leaves three. Musale Mudavadi, he was there because he was vying for nothing. He wasn't vying for governor, senate or anything. So he wasn't physically confined to a specific set of coordinates, like an MP or a senator who is vying would be. And the third person was Wetangula. Wetangula was vying for senator in Bungoma County, and that is a place that he doesn't even need a poster for him to be elected. He was actually very, very popular. Till date, he remains to be popular. That is why his candidate uh, of Ford Kenya was able to replace him with ease, despite there being strong challenge from UDA and other parties. And the fourth individual was Didi Nyoro. Didi Nyoro did not have to campaign in Kiharu. He knew he has won that seat 100% because his work could be seen. Even those of us who are not from Kiharu, we heard about the development he has done. We got to know that this member of parliament is actually working wonders 
wherever he is coming from. So based on that, I was actually shocked to see that Kimani Ishungwa was chosen to become the majority leader of Adidi Nyoro. Now what is the difference between the two leaders? I really, really suspect that Kimani Ishungwa lobbied for that position of majority leader and he has been doing it from a long time back. Didi Nyoro has not been aggressive about it. He never probably put in the request to the president. And when such is the case, if there is a presidential candidate and people are fighting for positions and you're not one of the ones fighting, when he gets there, he cannot forego those who already put in a request. And that position of majority leader is not small at all. It can seriously propel someone to greater heights in the political scene of this country. Anytime the president has an agenda that he wants to pass, he will summon the majority leader of the Senate, Aaron Cheriot, and the majority leader of the National Assembly, Kimani Ishungwa. So automatically, you find yourself rubbing shoulders with the president and the DP almost every two weeks or so. Even on Sundays, when the president is attending a church service, the majority leaders of various houses are invited and they're given a chance on the podium to speak. Even the various names of who gets to sit on what committee or who gets to be removed from what committee that is the role of the majority leader and the minority leader respectively. So by Didi Nyoro not getting that particular position or by him not fighting for it, I've never seen him in public putting in a request for that position. Mythical Linturia is saw him fighting to be the CS of agriculture. When the president was president-elect, he did tour Meru and there are some people who got on stage and told the president, please don't forget our son. Mythical Linturi. That was the message that was being put there over and over and over again. The president had to oblige. Today is the CS of agriculture. With all those hundred and something cases that the Uru Kenyatta government had placed on him. But nonetheless, you can't cry over spilt milk or water. What can Didi Nyoro do to boost his brand so that he can be a future presidential hopeful? Because believe you me, all is not lost. If we were to go based on positions, then Aden Dwale should have been President William Ruto's deputy. But instead today he's the CS of Defense and the MP of Mathira, the former MP of Mathira, who was not even the majority leader at one point, has come all the way up to becoming deputy president. So there are some things that Didi Nyoro can do to boost his political profile in between now and whenever the electorate will feel that he is ready to challenge for something bigger and with more responsibilities. And one of those things that he ought to do is to become more vocal. DP Rigadi Gashagwa really fought for that position and he did it strategically. Every other day he would be on TV defending William Ruto, going toe to toe with David Murade in uh, those in those debate sessions on KTN, NTV, Citizen. He would even take on the sitting president Uhuru Kenyatta. So at one point, President William Ruto got to see that I am under so much attack from the CS of Interior Matiangi, from uh, President Uru Kenyatta, from Raila Odinga. Attacks are coming left, right, center. And here, I have a fighter, someone who is taking them head on. That is the one thing Kindiki didn't do actually that made him play second fiddle to that position of deputy president. So if Didi Nyoro can become vocal, if he can be the one who is taking on the Azimio agenda, putting them in check in parliament, on TV, in rallies, in functions. It's all about online market share acquisition. How many times are we seeing your face? If I see you enough times, my subconscious mind slowly begins to accept the fact that, hey, this guy can become president. It starts off as a joke. The same way President William Ruto said he will be president one day. And people said this guy is going nowhere. And some of the people who said that eventually ended up voting for him. Because you flirt with the idea over and over and over until it sticks. So Didi Nyoro needs to seriously put himself out there if he has ambitions to lead the mountain and if he has ambitions to ever lead this country one day because as at now the way things are shaped up Kimani Ishungwa is better positioned to do all those things before Didi Nyoro but as usual guys that's just my opinion so please drop me your own comments in the comment section below I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response now in the event you're here for the first time please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to YouTube Search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios.